Hello, uh, welcome to our first lesson. So this whole first chapter is going to focus on solving equations. But before we can actually get to solving equations, we need a skill that we need to work on beforehand. And that skill is simply just being able to simplify algebraic expressions. So Now when we're talking about simplifying algebraic expressions, for at least this part of the, the, the course, for the first whole, well really all of the course, it's going to focus down to the kind of two steps. And I'm going to tell you the easiest way to remember these two steps is just to think DC, like Washington DC. And the D is going to stand for distribute. And the C is going to stand for combine like terms. Okay, so let's look at each of these individually first before we um, put everything together and make sure we can do this. So let's let's actually look at step two. Let's look in at, at the C, at the combining like terms. Now, while combining like terms, I guess the, there are a few questions we should ask ourselves. The, the first question we may want to ask is, uh, what are terms? when we're talking about algebraic expressions. And um, that's not too difficult. Let me write a big algebraic expression and let's talk about what the terms are. Okay, so I can write something like uh, 2x to the third power plus 5x, make my plus a little better, uh, minus 27 minus 15x plus 3x squared minus uh, 15. Okay, so what I've written is a big algebraic expression, and in this algebraic expression are, are terms. Now, how do I know what terms are? Terms are the things that are in between or on each other side of the plus and minus signs. So these plus and minus signs, let us kind of um, separate out the terms. So this is a term, 2x to the third, 5x is a term, this 27 is a term, 15x is a term, 3x squared and 15, those are, are, are our terms. And you can easily see the plus signs and minus signs separate them out. Those are like the dividers, the walls between all the terms. Okay. Now the terms can be made up of multiple pieces, and these pieces are all held together with whatever operations understood to be here. I don't see one, so that means it must be multiplication. And division will work as well. If I have multiplications or divisions, let me change one of these terms just to prove that point. So if this was uh, 15 divided by x there, that's also a term, the 15 divided by x or 15 over x. So all these pieces can make up a term, and what separates out the terms are pluses and minuses. So you should be able to look at something just visually and easily see, here's a term, here's a term, and so on. Sound good? Now, the next thing we need to think about is what makes them like. What makes terms like? And that's actually really simple as well. My example here is maybe oversimplified. I maybe should add some extra variables in there. But like terms kind of have to be two things. They have to have the same uh, variables. So the same letters. And they have to be raised to the same exponents. That's kind of how they explain it in the textbook. We have to be careful with this. Let me show you two terms that are not like, but some people think meets these two requirements. So if I had um, 3x to the third, y to the fifth, and I had uh, added to that 5x to the third, whoops, I mean x to the fifth, y to the third. And you say, well, they both have an x, they both have a y. I see a third power and a fifth power. Are they like terms? The answer is no. That's because this wording is a little bit tricky. The same variables have to have the same exponents on that same variable. So for instance, if I have, I think of the exponent as, you know, belonging to this variable. So I have an x to the third to be a like term. This term also needs an x to the third, which it does not have. So those are not like terms. So if you look up here, I only have a few like terms. Uh, I don't see any other x to the third terms. No. X terms. Let's see, I have another x term. 
So as far as being like terms, 5x and this 15x are like terms. Now if I had not added this divided by x, this would just be a plain number. Plain numbers are also like terms. So ignoring the divided by x, the 27 and the 15 can be combined. Now what do we mean when we say combine? So we're finally grouping this all into combined like terms. What does that mean? Well that just means adding or subtracting the numbers out front. And uh, at some point in your math career, you talked about what these numbers out front are called. If they're in the front of the variables and all that, just the plain number part, that's called the coefficient. Okay. And so whenever you combine like terms, so let's go ahead and combine this 5x and this uh, 15x. What you do is you add or subtract only the number out front and leave the term part, the thing that made it like the x, to alone. So if I were just, let's write this, let's ignore everything else in the problem and let's just say I have this 15x minus, 5, sorry, 5x minus 15x. And so what I would do to simplify this or to combine these like terms is I would say, okay, well, let's see, they are in fact like terms. They both have an x. So I have 5 of the x's minus 15 of these x's. And so I would like to just think of performing the operation on the numbers out front, 5 minus 15. You do not have to write all this. This is just overkill to make my point. And the term part, the x and the x stays the same. So what is 5 minus 15? Well, that's just negative 10. So I have negative 10x. Usually we definitely don't People don't take the time to write this step. We usually say, okay, 5x is minus 15x. Is what is 5 minus 15? Negative 10, and it's an x term. So negative 10x. Okay? So now with this, I brought up another very important point. These signs belong to whatever term is right behind them. So whatever, if you look at a term, you have to look at the sign right in front of it. That is kind of part of it. So... 15x, I look right in front of it and it's minus 15x, or you could think of it as negative 15x. I interchange those ideas because minus 15x is the same thing as negative 15x. This 3x squared, it is a positive 3x squared because it has a plus sign. Well, that should bring up the question, what about the very front one? I don't see a sign out front. Well, if you don't see a sign, if there's no plus or minus out front, then this is a positive 2x to the third. So make sure you know that the sign belongs to the term right after it, or the term has the sign right before it, whichever way you like to think about this. So minus 27, this is a negative 27, or a minus 27. Okay, so using all that, I think we should be able to just jump into some examples to be able to practice combining like terms. So we'll start really simply. Let's go with something like 2x plus 5. Oh, my plus signs are horrible today. Uh, plus 6x, they really are ugly, let's try that, plus 6x plus 4. And I say simplify this expression. Well, we're not ready for distributing, we haven't talked about that yet, and thank goodness there's nothing to distribute, so we're going to look at combining like terms. And so what I do whenever I actually do a big problem with lots of different types of terms is I underline the things as I go. And so I look and say, okay, I have a 2x, do I have any other x terms? This is a 5, this is a 6x, Ooh, it's a like term. This is a 4, so 2x plus 6x, let's see, it is a positive 6x, a positive 2. 2 plus 6 is 8, and it is an x term. So I can easily add those terms together to get 8x. Now I don't want to leave anybody floating, I need to make sure I gather everything up so I have a plain number. Do I have any other plain numbers? Yes, I do. Plus 4, positive 5, plus 4, that would be a positive 9. Now, can these two be added together? Well, the rule states that they have to be like to be added together. And this one has an x, and this one does not. And so we're finished with that, and so we have simplified that as far as we can go. We have combined the like terms, and we are done. So let's try some more examples, maybe moving a little more quickly now. So something like this, 2x plus 5 plus 6y plus 4. Very similar to the last example here. And so I go along looking, and I see 2x. Okay, I get my 2x. So I'm looking for x terms, not the 5. That's a plain number. 6y. Oh, I changed that term on us. It is not an x term anymore, so it's not like this one. Plus 4. So nothing's like. Well, if I'm writing what this is equivalent to, I can't leave any terms out. So I'm just going to bring down this lonely term 
that has no partner, that has nobody to combine it with. And then I can keep Mosey in here. And um, I see the 5. That's like the 4. And so 5 plus 4 is 9. And I see this 6y. There are no other y terms. And so I'm just going to bring it down. Now I will tell you something that I do um, because my math teachers were very picky is I always try to write my expressions in a certain order. I usually would write this this way. 2x plus 6y plus 9. But is there a difference in these two things? The answer is no, because the operations between these are addition and order of addition is it's commutative and associative. I could move these all around and it's equivalent. Um, so either of these answers is fine. I will just always write it with variables first, the plain number last. If I have exponents, the higher exponent goes first because I was I was threatened, uh, you know, by my math teachers growing up that they would beat me or something if I didn't do that. So, okay. Now let's keep going. Let's do some more examples. I may even get us a, a fresh uh, sheet of paper here to keep doing some more examples. Let's see. So let's do one like this: five x plus seven minus two x minus 3. And if I would like to do this, I'm going to look. I see I have an x term, and I have another x term, 5x, and I have a 2x. Notice that when I underline this, I'm grabbing the sign in front of it because it belongs to it. So this is a 5x minus a 2x. Well, those are like terms. I know it's going to be an x term, and the coefficients are 5 minus 2. Well, 5 minus 2 is 3, and it is an x term. 7 minus 3. That would be a positive or a plus 4. Nice. So hopefully you're not finding this very difficult. If you think I'm moving too fast, pause and think about each example. Let's do one or two more of these, and then we'll mosey on to the distributing part before we put it all together. So here's another example. 3x plus 9 minus x plus 5x squared plus 1. And I would like to combine like terms or simplify this expression. So I see that I have an x term, and a 3x, and I see that I have another x term, minus x. There's no number out front, <clears throat> but remember when there's no number out front of a variable, it's understood to be a 1. So I would always write my little 1 in. I see another term with x in it, but this is not a plain x, it's an x squared. So this is not like the 3x and the minus 1x is positive 5x squared. And then I also see that I have 9 and 1. So those are all my like terms. Because I do write this in the proper order, I'm going to go with the highest exponent first. So 5x squared, there are no like terms for that. So I'm going to bring down 5x squared as a just its lonely term. Okay, check, got it. 3x minus 1x. Well, 3 minus 1 is a positive 2, so plus 2x. And 9 plus 1 is 10, so positive 10, so plus 10. Okay. Notice in my answer here, there are no like terms to combine, so I've gone as far as I can. All right. Let's look at doing maybe one more example of just this before we move on. So minus 2x plus 6 minus 4x minus 10. So throwing a lot more negatives at you just to make sure you stay aware. And so I look and I have a minus 2x for an x term and a minus 4x. Okay, well this is going to be an x term, and if I'm at negative 2 and I go back or subtract 4 from that, I'm going to be at negative 6x. Okay, then I see I have 6 minus 10. Well, 6 minus 10, if I'm at 6 and I go back 10, that's going to put me at negative 4. So when I have a negative number down here, I'm going to write it as minus 4. Okay. So negative 6x minus 4. Okay. I think we should feel good on that. Let's mosey into the other half of this, the distributing. Okay. Now, when I ask people what they remember from 
from like high school math and, and like the few things they remember is like solving for X and all that. But when you like ask them to distribute, I think almost everybody seems like they remember that. So what in the world is distributing? There's this thing called a distributive property. I'm going to do this with no variables, just plain numbers that tells us that I can do this, I can handle this in two different ways. The typical way you were taught order of operations says, well, you do parentheses first. 2 plus 4 is 6, and so I'd have 3, and then the parentheses would be 6. There's no operation shown here, so what that means is it's a multiplication, so 3 times 6 is 18. Well, the distributive property tells us, when I use the distributive property, that I can actually do this in another order. When I have a number multiplied on the outside of a parenthesis, and inside the parentheses I have additions or subtractions, is that I can take this number from the outside and I can multiply it in by both of these individual numbers before adding it. So 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 4 is 12. And then when I add those together, 6 plus 12 is 18. So just, you see that these give you the same answer no matter kind of which order or way you want to work it. So that seems nice, but you can add first. That's not hard. Why is this useful? Well, this is useful when you have an example like this. 3 and it'll say x plus 4 instead of a 2. With what we just learned about combining like terms, can I add the x and the 4? No, they're not like terms. And so I'm stuck here. I can't go x plus 4 and then let's multiply it by 3. I wouldn't be able to progress or do anything. But since I have this distributive property, I could at least make this written a little more succinctly or nicely by saying, let's use the distributive property. Let's take this 3 and multiply it in or distribute it, hand it out evenly to everybody in the parentheses. So times 3 to x. 3 times x, that's just 3x. And 3 times this positive 4, well, that would just be positive or plus 12. Oh, that's really easy then. I'm just multiplying or taking this times 3 and giving it to everybody in the parentheses. So let's do some more examples of that really quickly. So I can handle some, some easy things like another easy example. 2 parentheses 5x plus 4. And you say, okay, well, these are not like terms. I can't add 5x and 4. So let's use our distributive property. So 2 times 5x is 10x. 2 times 5 is 10, and the x is just along for the ride. And 2 times this plus 4, that'll make positive 8, so plus 8. That's really easy. Um, let's see if we can do some things that are a little more challenging, maybe. What if we were to do something like, oh, well, this is not much more challenging, but let's add a, sub a negative or a subtraction sign in there, just to be aware. Well, if I go to distribute this, 4 times 2x, 4 times 2 is 8, with the x hanging on, so 8x. And 4 times, remember what I told you, this minus sign belongs to the 10. So this is 4 times negative 10. Well, that'd be negative 40. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that as minus 40. Okay, well, that's not too hard either. I handled the negative just fine. Well, let's up our game a little bit more. Let's do something a little more entertaining, because I know you're bored. Let's do a fraction, like 1 half times 8x minus 14. Oh my, now some people are, are a little bit anxious and maybe reaching for a calculator, but if I'm ever multiplying by a half, something with a 1 on top, and whatever number's down here, that's just how many pieces I'm dividing something into. So if I'm multiplying by a half, I'm splitting it into 2. So what's half of 8x? What's half of 8? 4. So that's just 4x. And what's half of this negative 14? Well, half of 14 is 7, so negative 7. Oh, I didn't need a calculator at all, because I think most of us can half things without too much stress. That's not super difficult or super scary. Nice. Well, what if I did something like this? I was really annoying, and I said, okay, well, you get halves, but what, uh, what about a third? 1 over 3, 12x plus 9. Well, if 1 over 2 was breaking it into two parts, 1 over 3 is certainly just breaking it into three parts. So I'm going to third this. So a third of 12... I know that 12 is 3 times 4, so that must be 4x. And a third of 9, well, 9 is 3 times 3, so that must be 3. Okay, that wasn't too hard. Now, if you do need to reach for a calculator, it's not hard to type in. If you want to do it in one third, you can put parentheses around it in your calculator and go 1 divided by 3, and then just multiply it by 12, and it will tell you 4. So in your calculator, you would type parentheses, 1 divided by 3, close parentheses, so that's your 1 third, 
times 12, and that would be like a third times 12, and it would tell you 4. Now your calculator is not going to carry the x, which you have to know to add the x to that term. Okay. But still, not that difficult. Come on, switch back to the pen for me here. There we go. Now it's listening. It's trying to act like my toddler. I don't... Well, you know, he's grown up now, but... Minus 2, 3x minus 5. So last level of difficulty I'm going to add to you is notice that the number out front is a negative this time. Every time it's been positive in all my other examples. So we can throw a negative out front and see what happens. Well, this is just a negative 2, and we're going to multiply it by everybody in here. So negative 2 times a positive 3x. If you don't know the rules on negatives and positives, whenever you multiply two opposites, like a negative times a positive or a positive times a negative, you're going to get a negative answer. It's when they're the same. Both negatives make a positive, and both positives will give you a positive. It's, it's the rule that rules whether you have an ugly or a pretty baby. When two pretty people have a baby, it's pretty. When two ugly people have a baby, somehow their ugliness cancels out, and it's a pretty baby. But whenever you have one ugly person and one pretty person, they always have an ugly baby. Okay, Just a rule of nature. I didn't make it up. So negative 2 times 3x. Well, negative 2 times the positive 3 is a negative 6 with the x. And negative 2 times negative 5. Well, a negative times a negative makes a positive, so that'll be plus 2 times 5 is 10. Okay. So hopefully you're feeling okay on all that. So now we, we're really done with the lesson. We would just like to kind of put all this together to be able to to do these two steps of simplifying. Uh, so let's actually put it all together. So remember, when I ask you to simplify, that for the whole rest of the course, just think of it as two steps. D and C, distribute and combine. So let's actually look at some examples. So, um, hmm, let's go with four. We're going to put all this together. Four parentheses, 2x minus 5, close parentheses, plus 3, parentheses, x plus 4. So simplifying is always two steps, distribute and combine. So look at every expression I give you and say, is there anything to distribute? Are there any parentheses? Oh, yeah, I see one right here. So it looks like I have two things to distribute. Let's just take care of the first one first. 4 times 2x is 8x. Easy. 4 times a minus 5 or a negative 5, that's negative 20. So let's go with minus 20. Piece of cake. Let's distribute the second half of this. Notice i got to pay attention to the sign here. This is a positive 3 I'm distributing. So positive 3 times a positive x is a positive 3x. And positive 3 times a positive 4, that's just positive or plus 12. Easy. I've distributed. Now, can I combine? Do I have like terms to combine? It appears I do. So let's see. 8x plus 3x. 8 plus 3 is 11x. That's a minus 20 or a negative 20 and a plus 12. So negative 20 plus 12. So if you owe me $20 and you have 12 in your pocket, you can pay off some of your debt, but you still will owe me. If you pay off 12, uh, you'll still owe me 8. So you're still $8 in the hole, negative 8. If you don't like thinking that way or you have a hard time adding and subtracting negative and positive numbers, you can just type in your negative 20 plus 12 in your calculator. So there, we did it. We distributed, now we combined. So we, we've done both steps and are easily able to make um, a simplified version. Doesn't the white look much more clean and crisp and simplified than the green writing here? So not that terribly difficult of a lesson. Uh, let's see, let's do another one or two and then we'll be done. Two parentheses, 2x plus 3 minus parentheses, 2x minus 6. Oh, this one's very sneaky. This one's a good one. This one's one they like to try to catch a lot of people on, on the test and stuff, is they don't put a number here, but they put a minus. And so remember from earlier, if there's ever a spot where we need a number, we need to distribute this subtraction sign to all these, but there's no number there. What's understood or what can I, I put there is I can always throw ones about everywhere I want to. And now that gives me something to distribute here. So let's, let's start with the front one, the easy one. 2 times 2x is 4x, and 2 times 3 is positive 6, so plus 6. Easy. Now let's distribute this minus or negative 1. Negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x. 
and negative 1 times a negative 6, a negative times a negative makes a positive. Negative 1 times 6 is 6. So we've done our distributing part of this. Let's see if we can combine like terms. So 4x minus 2x, 4 minus 2 is 2, so 2x, positive 6 plus positive 6, that makes positive 12. So plus 12. Nice. This is this is not hard at all. I think you, you'll, you'll do really well on this. There'll be questions on this on the test and everything. So let's see if we can go ahead and do one last example. Um, 5 parenthesis, 3x plus 7, close parenthesis, minus 1 half parenthesis, 12x minus 8. So about as miserable as we can make it look. And you may look at it and think, oh, I don't feel like doing this. But this is actually really easy. If we just do our two steps, distribute and combine, and take it nice and carefully, I think we can do this. So 5 times 3x, that's 15x. That was easy. 5 times 7, or positive 7. So it'll be positive or plus 35. And if you need a calculator for any intermediate of any of these pieces, then go ahead. No shame in it. Now i got to pay attention to this negative a half. So I'm going to half something and pay attention to the sign. So negative a half times six, uh, 12x. What's half of 12 is 6? Negative times a positive make this negative. So negative 6x. Negative a half times negative 8. Well, a negative and a negative make a pretty baby, a positive. And a half times 8, half of 8 is 4. Nice. So we've done the distributing without much stress at all. Can I combine like terms? Yeah, that's the easy part. I have 15x minus a 6x. 15 minus 6 is 9x. And I got a 35 plus a 4. 35 plus 4 is plus positive 39. Piece of cake. All right. Well, I hope uh, you feel a little better. I feel like you've learned how to simplify expressions. Just think of it in these two steps of distributing and combine. And I think that makes it pretty simple. All right, see you next time.